Editors such as Visual Web Developer Express or Visual Studio make it really easy to create and work with dynamic data projects. Whether you create a web application style project or a website project, you can select from built-in templates. So this example shows how we could go in, create a new website, and then we could select a dynamic data template. If we'd like to use Entity Framework for our model that will communicate between the database and the website, then we could select the ASP.NET Dynamic Data Entities website. If we'd like to use Link to SQL, we can of course select this highlighted one right here. Now, regardless of which template you select, Visual Studio will then apply that template and create a specific type of web application project or website. And you'll see this dynamic data folder. This is where all the key pages that are used in this dynamic data website are contained. And this is actually where you can go to customize things if you'd like. So let me show you an example of how we can use these templates to create a dynamic data website and what that website offers us out of the box. It's really simple to get started creating an ASP.NET dynamic data website. And we have two options actually. We can do websites or we can do web applications. So if I go up to File New Project, we can create a web application project. You'll notice that we have ASP.NET dynamic data entities web application and one for Link to SQL web application. Or if I just wanted a website project, we can do File New Website. And we have the same type of thing, but you'll notice it's now a Data Entities website or a Link to SQL website. So in this example, I'm going to do an ASP.NET Dynamic Data Entities website. And let's go ahead and call this Adventure Works Light Admin, because that's the database we're going to work against. And we're going to make some admin screens throughout this module. So I'll go ahead and hit OK, and it's going to take us to a file called global.asax and give us some information about what we need to do. Now we'll get to that in the next section of this module, but for now just note that we have some nice comments here on what we need to do, and ultimately we need to go in and register our Entity Framework model. So we're going to put in the name of our model right there. So we'll come back to that in a later section. Now let's take a look at what we get out of the box though. First off, you have a site master. So we have a master page. We can go in and certainly uh, tweak things. Right now, dynamic data site is our kind of header, if you will. But we have some built-in style sheets that you can go in and tweak those as well. So we have a site.css. And this will allow you to change the different styling of the different pages you'll see that will be generated as I do those later in this module. And then we have this dynamic data folder. Now this has the different templates I mentioned earlier. Entity templates can be defined here. So we have our edit, our insert, our selects. Uh, different content such as images can actually be defined here. You can see that we have some paging images that are uh, available here. We have a little arrow. We can also come in and you'll see that we have in addition to those field level templates. So if you wanted to go in and modify how date time fields are edited, you'll notice there's a text box here. And this text box is going to be used for editing date time type fields. Well, we can go in and tweak that. Or maybe we want to tweak the way that just text in general is handled, URLs, Booleans, and you can see there's several other things here. We also have a folder that handles filtering our data. And then we have our actual page templates for our inserts, our updates, our edits, our selects, and drilling down into details about what will happen as they click, click on a particular row. So all of this code here would obviously take quite a bit of time to make on our own. This is what we're given out of the box. This is our scaffolding. This helps us, once we make a model, very easily generate the insert, update, and delete operations that we're after. So that's all we have to do, though, to create a dynamic data website. Now, the next process is we need to create a model, and that's what we'll look at in the next section.